Okay, hello. My name is Daniel, and um, continuing on from Harald's talk, I'm going to um, talk about how to run your GPS Edge data services um, network with Osmocon, uh, Osmocon software. So, which one of you has already run GPRS data services? Okay, quite a few. So it's probably going to be boring for you as well, but uh, yeah, I hope you'll survive. <coughs> um, first of all, the great picture again. Um, this time I'm going to concentrate on the lower part, so the packet switched um, network. Again, you have the, the phone which connects via UM to a BTS. BTS connects to the BSC. Um, and then, or BSC, in our case, it's the network in a box. And um, then you have a PC usually with the BSC that connects to the SGSN via the GB interface and um, so on. Uh, to the GGSN, where authentication then is done in uh, inside the packet switch network. So, um, what we have implemented so far is a little bit um, simplified. Again, we have the phone, obviously, the Osmo BTS, which basically also houses the Osmo PCU. So, the PCU is the packet control unit. That's um, different from those of you who know classical networks where the PC usually is um, at the BSC level. <coughs> so, yes, uh, then the, the, the Osmo PCU um, connects to the Osmo SGSN through the GB interface um, and that connects through GTP to the OpenGGSN where the connection is terminated. So the IP packets uh, basically tunnel from the MS to the OpenGGSN, and there they go into the wild. Um, additionally to the configuration that Harald has showcased, we need um, we also need configuration for the Osmo NetB. So um, as Harald mentioned, the BTS uh, is basically configured by, by the BSC, or in our case, the Osmo NetB. And um, the same is uh, true for GPRS. So, the Osmo NetB, when the Osmo BTS connects to it, sends also the GPRS configuration parameters to the Osmo BTS process, which then talks to the Osmo PCU, and so the Osmo PCU will know where to connect to. We need some configuration for the, the Osmo PCU, and then, of course, for the other services, Osmo SGSN and Osmo GGSN. So, here, it's just, um, I mean, we can run everything on one box, so it's also a data network in a box, if you will, but um, for, um, yeah, for generalization sake, I've just now shown the configuration, what you would do if you have everything on a different box, because some larger installations, you'll probably want that. So we have the... Um, Osmo NetBay, which has its own IP address, can be run separately. You have the Osmo BTS, which sits on the same device as the Osmo PCU, so they have the same IP address there. Then the Osmo SGSN has an interface facing the Osmo PCU, which has an IP address, and also has an interface facing the Osmo GSN um, with its own um, IP address, which can be the same, but doesn't have to be. And the OpenGGSN can still be another box with a different IP address. <coughs> okay. So for the PCU, you um, generally just uh, have the, the lower level configuration. So you set up which coding scheme to use. And so coding scheme for, for GPRS is um, how much redundancy you want to include in your packets. If you use um, the maximum coding scheme 4 for GPRS, then you don't have any redundancy, so if you have any bit errors, a packet gets dropped and has to be retransmitted. While coding scheme 1 has lots of redundancies and uh, you have very limited throughput. 
Um, then yeah, there are some parameters to configure the maximum coding scheme that you want to use, the thresholds of um, bit errors at which you want to upgrade to the next um, higher coding scheme or the next lower coding scheme if the error is too high. And um, yeah, alloc allocation algorithm dynamic is more a historical thing. Um, we had two different um, allocation algorithms um, back in the when the Osmo PCU wasn't really stable. Um, but right now you'll want dynamic and it will know whether to um, sorry, whether to allocate only yeah, one slot or multiple slots. So with uh, GPRS you have um, as Howard mentioned, you have the time slot um, system and with GPRS you can use multiple time slots um, together to increase your throughput rate. For, for a subscriber. And then um, another interesting um, option for the PC is the um, TBF idle time. So the TBF is the temporary block flow, um, which exists in two variants, uplink and downlink. And um, so downlink means to the phone, uplink means um, from the phone to the network. And as a network, we have the choice after we have sent all data to the MS, we can still keep this temporary block flow open um, and wait if there might be more data. So, for example, for TCP connection, the phone sends a SYN up to the network, then um, it has an uplink TBF, obviously. At some point in time, the reply comes, um, SYN ACK. And um, so the SYNAC generates a downlink TBF um, to the phone. But after this packet is, has been sent, then basically, usually you would close the TBF again. But it doesn't make any sense because the phone wanted to talk to the network. So next thing, it sends an ACK together with the request and it gets an answer. And then you have to go through this whole establishment procedure of um, creating a new um, DLTBF again and again, potentially for, for many exchanges over and over again. So that really helps um, with the downlink throughput. Is um, milliseconds. Um, okay, so um, as I mentioned, most of the configuration of the um, Osmo PCU uh, comes from the NITB. So I've um, also Basically, the, the other parts that Harold had, have, has mentioned um, belong there as well. They're just left out for simplicity's sake. You would have GPRS mode GPRS instead of GPRS mode none, which is the default if you don't put anything. So, um, then you have the routing area, same, basically similar to the um, location area code for um, classical GSM. And then the Enzyme network or the, the BVCI and the Enzyme, the um, BSS virtual connection identifier and the network service equipment or endpoint identifier. Um, those are basically just numbers that we choose. It um, has to do with the classical structure of um, the GSM network with um, also uh, you can or this was typically run over frame relay, so you could have redundancies and use different um, different NS connections to terminate the the, um, the GB link. And yeah, well, long story short, for for our purposes, you just pick a number. The, those two numbers identify the um, the cell, the system, and then. Yeah, you can address, or the the SGSN can address the the PCU based on that because, um, as you can see below there, uh, it uses UDP um, with static ports and with uh, not in place. Um, you might not have such a good time identifying the the different connections. Then, um, for the NS virtual circuit uh, zero, which is the only one we use. Um, you have the local UDP port, which is the port that address um, packets are sent from on the, the PCU. And the remote UDP port is where it's sent to, obviously, and the remote IP is the IP address uh, these packets are sent to. So uh, why are local and remote port uh, 
not the same here. They could be if everything's on um, a different box, but if you run it on the same box, then um, well, you would have the remote IP address of uh, 127.0.0.1, and uh, yeah, you, you wouldn't be able to send from the same port combination. So that's why it's different. Um, yes, and um, with this IP address um, AA, AA, so this link to go to the Asma SGSN, to that interface. Um, for the TRX, um, you have to, as Harold mentioned, configure the time slots. Um, can be a PDCH, which is a static configuration for this time slot. Um, and probably you want to have at least one PDCH um, configured all the time. And quite recently, we also have dynamic time slots, which are PDCH um, or are used as PDCH if no calls are ongoing. And so TCHF and TCHH are the traffic channels for voice-based um, so voice calls. So um, we have a dynamic mode of operation where you can have um, as many TCHs as you need for, for voice connections. And if you don't have um, a call ongoing, then this time slot can also be used for, for as PDCH to, to bundle the data and to get um, faster faster connectivity. And um, also these, uh, the PDCHs should be used or should be in um, contiguous order. So uh, have them, I mean, we always have them all bunched at the end and then uh, you don't run into any problems with uh, allocating uh, multi-slot um, TBFs. Okay, so onto the SGSN. Um, SGSN has two parts. The NS part in uh, in the bottom is basically its connection, its interface to to the PCO um, encapsulation UDP local IP. Um, wait. Yes. Okay. Uh, is AAA, as seen the the network diagram, the local port is the port that we previously set the, um, the PCU to send data to, or we set the configuration in the Osmo NITB, but that's what uh, Osmo PCU then then uses. Um, frame relay uh, is supported, or we support frame relay um, GRE generic generic route capsulation as well, but uh, it's, we don't use it here. And the upper part, <laughs> excuse me, um, upper part is the well, it's the SGSN um, node, which has the connection to um, to the GGSN as well. So for the GP GTP link, um, we set the local IP, um, so it binds or it can bind to a different IP there than. Uh, it does for the NS link uh, because the SGSN doesn't really need to be in the public network. So, uh, um, yeah, I mean, we can uh, have different, different interfaces bound there. So then we configure the first and the only GGSN with the remote IP C.C.C.C. .C .C .C. Um, use GTP version one and uh, Again, same as with the NITB, uh, we have the off policy, which uh, here is set to closed. Closed means it will accept all IMSIs where the first digits match the um, mobile uh, country code and mobile network co code name. So um, we don't really have, if you look at um, this again, um, the Osmo SGSN now, um, tries to do authentication as well. But um, if we're operating the Osmo NITB, where the VLR and the HLR is located, we can't really do that. We don't have access to to the keys or to the subscriber list. So we have to do some, in the simple case, we have to do something um, or add a subscriber list into the, or in the SGSN as, uh, itself. So off policy closed. There's also um, different other off policies. 
um, they can be accept all, which just accepts everyone, um, which might not be a good idea if you're broadcasting with power and uh, on a public place. Um, closed accepts only the matching ones and the ones that are defined in the ACLs. Um, ACL only obviously only accepts the ones in the ACL and auth policy remove uh, remote was recently introduced with um, Osmo HLR, which if you're running a more complicated setup with uh, not just Osmo NITB, um, you can or it can connect to the HLR and basically use the key data um, for real authentication, not just accepting them into the network and um, encryption as well. So, um, yeah, the ACLs are just uh, MZ, ACL, add, and then the MZ, and then that uh, <laughs> subscriber is allowed into the packet network as well. And so, yeah, the GGSN is quite, the configuration is quite easy as well. Just um, specify a listen um, address to bind to again, then um, a network prefix where uh, when you start OpenGGSN, it will create its own tun tunnel device where the IP packets of the subscribers fall out. So that's the address range that it will assign the addresses um, to the to the MS, to the phones. And then um, a DNS server that will be um, handed along as well. Ah, yeah, exactly. So you sh it can easily be seen that we have VTY interfaces in the Osmo NITB, VTY in the Osmo BTS, VTY in the Osmo PC, or VTY in the Osmo SGSN, but this one is named OpenGGSN, so obviously there can't be a VTY interface. Um, <laughs> we are, Harold, I think, resurrected the project. The, it was an existing project and um, it now has, I mean, it has Osmo, Lip Osmo integration now with the um, control interface, yes. But, um, yeah, I mean, it works well or well enough for us, so um, we didn't really need to add more to it right now. Might change in the future. Okay, so some miscellaneous stuff. Um, if you want to get it all running, you have to set up and they connect to each other. Then a um, couple things you could easily forget is enable forwarding and masquerading on the box where the OpenGGSN is running because then the packets arrive there and uh, <laughs> the computer doesn't know what to do with it. And um, on phones, uh, I've I mean, on Android phones is mostly the type of phone I use to to test GPS, and uh, you might have to enable data roaming, which uh, happens if your SIM card is allowed into the network but um, has a different prefix than um, the network you're running. Then uh, it will be a roaming, or the phone recognizes it as a roaming case, and because it doesn't know, it's uh, community network where you don't pay roaming charges, usually it will just block you. I think early iPhones don't care, so they might work anyway. Um, and the access point name must be set manually. So on Android phones, if you put in one of our SIM cards and you start it up for the first time, then it, I believe it has an internal database with um, the 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 MCs and network names and uh, then looks up which APN, so which access point name to use and, and the data for that. And obviously for our networks, it doesn't have that, so it just stays blank. Um, the APN in that configuration, we ignored completely, so you can set any name, um, username, no password, and uh, it will just work. But it, uh, Android phone, phones refuse to connect uh, via GPRS if you don't have an APN set. So. Okay, now the hard part. Okay, so now I can see the bottom. Um, so I've logged into um, OpenBSC, which is the Osmo NITB, but so this is the VTY interface um, with logging. And Let's see. Port 
two, four, four. Oh, what is it? There. <coughs> this is the Osmos JSON. So first, uh, what we can do is show an S. So here it will say that it has the Enzyme 1234 and SVC1234. The remote BSS is alive and unblocked, and it's coming from, well, localhost port 23001. So the PCU is talking to the Osmo SGSN. And also see some logging messages here. Um, show mm context all shows that it doesn't have any mm context or show PDP context all. So currently no phones are registered there. Then okay let's see. Take this phone out of airplane mode. And um, okay, okay. So we missed the um, the CS part. This is the the packet switch part. Which there we go. Uh, you can see. The logging messages, the yellow messages are uh, basically right now the interesting ones. You have a uh, GMM <laughs> attach request. Um, the SGSN asks for the identity, it gets a response, <laughs> then um, <clears throat> yeah, the authorization just happens and we authorize it and we send back the um, GPRS attach accept and attach complete. So that's the GPRS attach, attaching to the network. And after that, um, we activate the PDP context. So the phone asks for um, or requests an activate PDP context. We found uh, GGSN for APN TYU. So uh, I was quite creative with um, creating the, the APN here. Um, you can also have different GGSNs for different APNs and then have different data services um, according to that or terminate into an internal network or into the internet. But right now this is just the bare bones configuration. And then, so this happens on the NS link, then on GTP the SGSN asks the, uh, the SGSN asks the GGSN to create a PDP context. Um, this um, comes back with a confirmation with has been accepted, and yes, after that, we sent back an activate PDP context acknowledgement, and then we have the unit data here, which is basically the phone trying to browse uh, one of its Android, Google, or so servers, but I don't uh, have internet right now, so that's not going to work. So um, yes, uh, basically. <laughs> That's it. Does anyone have uh, any questions? And, um, <coughs> we have this microphone to pass around, so if anyone has a question, please raise your hand and I'll... <coughs> Hello. Thank you. I just would like to, to ask you the current status of the integration with the user IP, the B200. It's uh, feasible today if we want to uh, set up our own network using GPRS to use uh, this device from Etus? User IP, I, I think it should be. I mean, it, it works with um, Osmo TRX, Osmo BTS TRX, so it should. So I, what I don't know is if um, the physical layers up to it to, to generate that, those messages but because you have different uh, different coding scheme for for GPRS on the physical layer but 
I think there's no issue whatsoever. I'm not. I'm not aware of any issue um, why it shouldn't work. Um, but um, we are not the ones who have lots of experience with with uh, the the USRP device. But uh, I don't think there is a problem. Yeah. In fact, I, I always I try to get close to GPRS. I. Okay. So. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. You said it worked for you. Yeah. I'm, so. Unless I'm confused. It worked for me last time I tried it. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> One, once more for the stream. So, you have a question? So, right now you're running all the software on the laptop, right? No, right now I'm running all the software on the, oh. on the system BTS. So, what did you put in as IP addresses? You had all the okay. IP yes. addresses on the sure. slides? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Is it done? Uh, once. Okay. Um. So, f so this the special special case. Everything on one um, mm -hmm. device. So I have remote IP is localhost. Um, let's see the. PCU has no IPs configured. The SGSN has. Um, so, yeah, th that's one special case if you're running everything on one device. Mm -hmm. um, for the NS interface, it's just localhost, port 23000. Um, the PCU is 23001. And for GTP, the local IP is, um, yeah. 127.0.0.1 and it sends to 127.0.0.2 because otherwise it would receive its own um, GTP traffic. And then the not Osmo open GGSN config is located here. It just listens on 127.0.0.2 and that's all you need. And if I had a, if it had a default route, well, it has a default route, but if my laptop had internet connectivity, it could serve as well. Oh. So I have a question that I think I know the answer to, and then a, I would love to share a statement that caused me to lose many hours of my life. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Unproductively. Um, the question is, is that uh, all of this business with different loopback IP addresses uh, kind of because of overlapping ports is because it's all some standard that you guys didn't pick, right? Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, and then the comment uh, that is incredibly obscure um, is that I've discovered uh, that if you are playing with this stuff using an existing operator SIM card, so that's you haven't rolled your own. You can connect to the network, you know, uh, if the SIM card kind of will allow it. But a lot of SIM cards have secret blacklists for which networks they are willing to uh, pull data from. So you can have something that looks like it works completely for CS, but will break for a packet switch because the SIM card is prohibiting it. Uh, FYI. <laughs> it's like three You're days. sure it's not just the APN configuration? I'm certain. Okay. Um, Oh yeah, there's something here. Yeah, well, okay. Expert. Yeah, and it well, you can store on a SIM card. You can store um, uh, what's called a, a forbidden or an APN blacklist. So there's a special file on the SIM card which the operator can provision, which contains uh, basically uh, yeah a blacklist of of APNs that uh, phones are not permitted to access. I'm not. Sure. I think there's even wildcard possibility. I'm not quite sure about that, but um, actually, I'm pretty sure there is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and another fun fact are um, BlackBerry phones, which um, even if you tell it to connect to an APN, they will, or the, the um, older ones, they will always try to connect to their BlackBerry APN first and get their configuration and um, authorizations, what are they allowed to do from there, and then connect to the internet if they're indeed allowed to do that. So. There was some some interesting things with BlackBerry phones there as well. Uh, you mentioned. Uh, okay, I'll I'll go ahead and because I have the microphone. 
It's on. It's on. It's on. So, um, just in relation to the USRP, I, I didn't spend an awful lot of time with it, but I have um, successfully connected phones with the Atos N210. Um, but in, as I said, I didn't spend an awful lot of time, but in my experimentation, I um, got the, everything configured correctly, set up. I was uh, able to shell into the phone. And from there, I could ping and even run a ICMP trace route. But I didn't successfully get actually my Jabber client to connect. I would see packets going to the internet and I would see them coming back, but they weren't really making it back to the phone. And it seemed that once you, you could ping, but once you tried to do anything beyond that, um, so something happened. I tried configuring complete uh, PDCH channels, so no voice or anything like that, and uh, I still couldn't get um, actual real data flowed. I don't know if you have a comment on that. The, the issue could be our way of dealing with um, bursty traffic. So if you only have uh, like one packet sent and then lots of, so there's no TBF established. Uh, you the SGSN receives a packet, uh, or rather the the PC receives the packet for the phone, and then um, yeah, we establish the TBF, page the phone, um, establish it, and uh, the problem though is we we discard the packet, so we we expect that um, it will be retransmitted as well. So that can probably decrease performance. So if you've ever used um, a commercial GSM network, um, a G commercial GPRS network, production GPRS network with any kind of like laptop or other data device, you will have seen that sometimes you get ridiculous <laughs> RTT in a ping up to like 23 or 50 seconds or something abs absurd like that. So classic uh, production operator networks tend to buffer for hours, let's say, the packets, whereas we do not buffer any packets. So basically the packets that... Um, that we receive, if we cannot immediately deliver them to the mobile station, we drop them. Um, right? We page the phone, but we drop the packet, and once the phone is there, we assume that TCP or whatever higher level protocol will retransmit and then deliver the packet to the receiver. That's maybe what what uh, what plays into the bit. Anyway, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, we have to really... I'm one more question, but we have to cut it short uh, to still uh, keep in the schedule. So, uh, I would like just to ask, uh, you mentioned Edge uh, yes. Yeah. Did you do any uh, testing with Edge? You were able to achieve uh, Edge protocol. Yeah. Did you able to use the Edge protocol with any uh, BTS station or uh, any modification of TRX? We have Edge support for the Sysmo BTS. Yes. Um, the caveat right now, I believe, is that if you switch on Edge, you uh, we will not allow GPRS or GPRS. Only phones will not work anymore, so um, they're basically a hard switch that you have to do. So uh, now it doesn't support voice and edge on the same TRX, you mean? Or? Um, the, the PDCH is, is the same, so it supports voice and, uh, and edge fine, but it doesn't support GPRS. So you, have old, you might have old phones that don't support ah, okay. edge, just support GPRS. So... Um, we have an um, either-or kind of configuration. There is no dual mode because that would have involved uh, lots more development time. I mean, so not right now. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, thanks, Daniel.